Hey, all right. So I decided that what I would like to explore, uh, and that's just something that I do occasionally also, I like to explore older games or remakes of games that, uh, that I remember from when I was younger. Uh, this particular game that I'm going to be playing today, Shadowgate, uh, I remember very, very vividly from my youth. It was actually part of a series uh, of games. They were originally, I believe they were originally Macintosh games, but they were point-and-click adventure games. Uh, kind of similar to Myst. If you've ever played the Myst games, they're, they're kind of similar to those. Uh, but they were a little bit more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not necessarily hardcore. It's not like the right word. They were, they were a little bit more... And Deadly is not the right word either. I don't know. They, they they used a similar method that like Dark Souls uses where it, death is the teacher. Death teaches you what not to do. Uh, <clears throat> only instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, only instead of, uh, you know, learning patterns and, and stuff like that for enemies, like in Dark Souls, you're learning how to solve puzzles. And if you solve it incorrectly, then you die. Uh, and so you have to figure out a different way to do it. It was part of a series. They had uh, several games. The second one was Deja Vu. I think that was the second one. There's three of them. There was Shadowgate, Deja Vu, and Uninvited. I'm not sure what order they came out in. I'm pretty sure Shadowgate was the first. I, I really, really wish they would remake all of them because I remember playing all of them and loving all three of them. <clears throat> but maybe, as I do have an emulator... On this, uh, I actually have an emulator, but I, I can't stream from that. I have an emulating machine in my in my TV in the game room, but I can't stream from that or, or record from that. So uh, I'll probably have to see if my emulator is still on this computer. I don't know if I still have it or not. But it, maybe maybe I'll play Deja Vu and Uninvited if this uh, sparks my interest enough. Uh, I used to be really good at this game. I used to speed run it <laughs> when I was when I was a kid. I used to speed run it and try to see how fast I could get through the entire game. I think my best time was around 15 minutes, maybe a little less than 15 minutes. Uh, I uh, just you know full disclosure. I have played this game, this remake already quite a bit. Uh, I've not finished it because they have added a bunch of stuff to it and they made it far more difficult than it was before. What I'm going to be doing today is because uh, of something I haven't been doing. I haven't been playing the normal game uh, What? because they, they have two different versions in this. They have a normal version and a classic version. And the normal version, I thought, was going to be what it used to be, but it's not. The classic version is what it used to be, uh, along with a lot of additional things. There's even multiple difficulties within classic. But let's go ahead and go in. I'm going to try doing normal, uh, which... Uh, I don't know. It might be super easy, and I might be a little disappointed, uh, but we'll see. All right, so new game, and we'll do normal. See, normal says for players new to the adventure game genre. Well, I'm not really new to the adventure game genre. That's, the music's a bit loud in my ears. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, the torches never run out, which is, to me, that's sort of like losing some of the experience because the game used your torches as like a soft timer uh, because you could never not have your torches going. If your torches ever went out, then you would die. Uh, so, I don't know. Torches always going kind of seems like it's cheaping in a little bit. But we'll see. We'll see what, what normal looks like. Um, I'll play with the hints off. Plus, I really love the art style. It's so pretty. Certainly it shall be these things. But for you, young Jair Kathagar, soldier of Windermere, could it not be so much more? In dreams, I have come to you, beseeching, entreating. Ah, I mean, look at that. It's so pretty. It's, it's like watercolors. Take naught but a dirk, a torch. Ride south from Rivelin, around the southern arm, through the Waven Fairwood, past Myrithath, beyond the That's frightening. of Myrna <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why my throat's so messy today. And the darkness of Tarketh's Pass. There you shall I recognize find that tune. stone in wait. Under the shade of the mountain ridge, none have entered. 
Either on foot, on mount, on wing. Gatekeeper, the oldest of spires. It harbors that which has been spoken of in whispers and ascribed to legend. Hmm. Shadow Gate, the living castle. Ah, so cool. It looks so pretty. I love it. But all is not they did such a good job making the this similar it's the same style like the still pictures you know but they have they added movement and, and energy to it in in a way that's really really creative it is there that you will find me black mirror of the circle of 12 it is there that you will find this great quest it is there that you will find yourself. And we should start outside a door. Yep. <sighs> With Lagmir's words echoing about your head, you stumble a bit until the words world ceases its lurching. You stand before the gatekeeper mountain, an ornate door framed by a series of skulls is fashioned into the rock wall now already this is different <laughs> than the original game the original game just had like a stone up here like a, a headstone that had a skull and there was a key hidden behind it and that's how you got in the like a lot of people got stuck in the first room because they couldn't figure out how to get through the door but because they never figured out that they had to hit the skull at the top to knock it loose to find this the key behind it uh this is yorick who is your hint giver i'm gonna try not to use him Oh, I guess I should read it. Uh, if you need help on this quest of yours, just speak to me and I'll give you a hint. All right, so I got a key. And then there's a helmet here. But I need to break the roots with my dirk. And then I will equip the helmet. Okay, and then I will use the key on the door. Okay. Mere was a fool to send a child to do that which even the vaunted Circle of Twelve could not. Contain my growing power. Come if you wish. It makes little difference. Seal your fate within this living castle of the dead. I see in the original it's just like eyes appeared and then there was text. You know, actually having the voice acting and then having it animated with like flames coming out of the eyes. It's, just, it's, it's a really neat touch. So I don't even know if I need to pick up torches in this since the torch never goes out. So I'm not even going to bother picking up torches. And watch that bite me in the butt, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll use the lever here. And that gives us a key over here. And this probably still need the spell to open it. Yeah. So it's magically sealed. There's a spell we get later that lets us open that. Use the key on the door and pass through. Okay, all right, so here we are here. All right, so we got search the corpse and pick that up. We're gonna open the book, but not pick it up because if you pick it up, you die. And then we'll look at it and we get the invoke spell. Uh, all right, let's look at the other things I got. You read the hastily scrawled writing on the parchment. Since it is the only means to capture and control the elementals, you must hide the silver orb beyond the waters of the sewer. Because apparently there's a, a rash on controlling ele elementals, and we have to stop that. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. The controls are a little yonky. It takes a bit to get used to navigating this wheel instead of just point and click. Open, read... All right. You read the message scrawled on the pages. Brown, I have your dog. If you wish to see the flying ace again, then bring the three pumpkins, three pumpkins, to the place beyond the harvest door. But be wary, for only one outfitted in a mask for the hallowed eve can gain entrance. 
There you must carve my visage and illuminate the sacrifices in the field of jack-o'-lanterns. Then I will be freed, and this will all end. Cordially, DP. All right, so I have to make jack-o'-lanterns. Three jack-o'-lanterns, most likely. Okay, and scroll and open and read. You read the message uh, Message scrawled on the scroll. Fandral, this missive is of utmost importance. We must coordinate our efforts. Seek my obelisk in the Acolyte Den below the sewers. I fear the worst is upon us, but I have plans in motion that may yet avert disaster. It is signed with the name of Lakmir. I bet I'm the plan. All right. Uh, so that's it there. So let's go this way. Okay, so I've got three doors, and I'm gonna search this bag. And I got a parchment. While the writing is difficult to discern, you manage to glean a few key phrases. The danger is real. Alert the surrounding lands. Seal off the passages into the Gatekeeper Mountains. The wax seal shows an eagle in flight and is signed by someone named Fandril. Okay, so that's open. Okay, so I can't do anything in these rooms, if I remember correctly, until later, because I can't get to this guy because I can't cross the water, and I can't get behind the waterfall because the water's flowing too heavily. Yeah, the magnificent waterfall cascades from the mouth of an ancient stone statue, painstakingly carved into the cavern wall. Below it, an undulating mass of water hovers playfully above the river. It's an elemental, yeah. You have to use the elementals to uh, get past certain obstacles. All right, so yeah, can't do anything here yet. Okay, this is the crypt. This is where you get cursed. As soon as I open this, I'm going to get cursed. Ah! Alright, so. When you open the tomb, a horrific creature is released, letting out a piercing cry that cuts into your very being. It's a banshee, harbinger of death and disease. You feel a momentary stabbing pain before the specter winks out of existence. So that's one of your timers in the game. You have to solve that curse before it kills you. Um, and... Uh... You had to mix a potion in the original game. I don't know what you have to do in this, but probably close to the same thing. As you grasp the large orange thing, it becomes painfully clear that it is a pumpkin. Okay, so there's one of the three. And burn the mummy. Nothing. Alright, and I have... Is that, is that a mask? horrible visage of this wooden mask resembles a witch from the children's tale. Alright, so there's the Halloween mask. So let's go ahead and equip that. <laughs> I think there's a witch's hat you get later also. Oh, sorry. I did that backwards. This way. Okay, here's a scroll. Oh, come on. Just pick it up. I'm telling you, man, this menu navigation is a little wonky, but it's still pretty cool. Um, all right, let's burn that guy. There's a bag. Search the bag, and I got another scroll and two gears. You rummage through the thick burlap, finding a scroll and two gears. So you take these while discarding the sack. All right, so let's take a look at the scrolls. A drawing of six rectangular shapes are drawn on the parchment. Six rectangular shapes. Several lines point to the shapes with writing underneath. You read two of the notations. This mirror leads through the furnace and into the castle beyond. And these mirrors require power to activate and will teleport to places strewn across the castle demence. All right. Uh, I have another one. The handwritten scroll is faded and difficult to read, but you can make out one passage. When Majal's tail lights the northern skies and the alignments are in harmony, then shall ye take the circle runes 
of water and fire and the all-seeing eye and place them with the great eagle that sits on the one tree. What? Okay. Let me read that again. Hang on. I jotted that down. I have no idea if my notes will help, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, and if I remember correctly, it's the center one. Strong iron bracket secures this torch to the wall. Smack it. Yeah. So, I know I'm, I'm like that seemed like a just pre pre knowledge, and it was pre knowledge, but it was just I figured it out my first playthrough through trial and error. Is like the, tr the I can't pick up the torches that are attached to the wall. It gives me the option to try hitting them, so I hit it, and one of them moved and it moved the thing. So I was like, okay, so that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Um, all right, I can't do anything in here yet. That's the mirror room that they were talking about. The one that the one that has a door behind it, and then two of them that lead to other places, but they have to be activated. <clears throat> That's what that is. All right, this is the cold room. Yes, with the ice elemental. And there's apparently... Oh, it's not in this version. There's a spider up at the ceiling in, in one of the versions. The harder version, but... It's not there. All right, but there's a there's a scroll here, so let's melt that out. And let's take a look at it. Open and read. Ah, okay. As you scan the scroll, one peculiar word amongst the, almost seems to jump out at you. Agap! In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with power, and quickly write down the strange marking in your spell book. Okay, so I have a spell. I have learned to spell. And this should be the dragon room. Yep. All right, so first thing you wanna do is equip the iron shield. You lash the iron shield securely to your forearm. The dragon notices you, moves its ponderous weight and begins gathering a breath. All right, so I don't know if I need this helmet, but I'm gonna take it anyway. You drop the helmet to your satchel, and with the roar, the ancient beast releases a scorching stream of fire at you. You raise your iron shield just in time to block the dragon's flame, dispersing it harmlessly to either side of you. And I definitely need the hammer, so I'm taking that. And gathering another breath. The dragon releases a superheated stream of fire at you. You lift your iron shield and once again block the fiery flame. Although this time, you can actually feel the heat. Uh, there's nothing else in here other than a skull. So we're just going to go ahead and go. And then back again. Teeth chattering, you stand within the cold cellar, hugging yourself for warmth. A creature made of ice hovers playfully on the far side of the room. Yes, yeah, the ice elemental. All right. So I've got the hammer now, but I don't think, I can't do anything with that doorway yet. So let's go ahead and back out. And then this is another thing that you discover through trial and error. You have to learn, well, one thing you can do is you push one of the buttons and it tells you everything you can interact with. You know, so you have this, this uh, weird altar thing and you have this, which is a doorway to the next room. And then you have this, which you can just Boink. And it creates a passageway. Um, yeah. So just, you know, trial and error. Trial and error, you find stuff. Um, okay, you force yourself through the narrow opening and into the darkness beyond. A figure moves within the opening of the back of the grotto. He doesn't seem to pose any risk to you. Okay, so I'll take this. This is the, the arrow, right? The fletching on this arrow looks a bit tattered, but its silver arrow tip looks to be in good condition. Yes, this is the silver arrow. We go this way. All right, and the two bridges. Okay, I'm gonna need this. So let's break this apart. Another thing discovered through trial and error. And then pick this up. And one of the things like, I discovered I needed this later because I moved into the courtyard area, which is not far from here. Uh, and I had a rope, so, but I couldn't figure out how to get through the things that the, the, the arrow slits at the top. You have to like climb up the castle wall. So you have to make a grappling hook. 
And when I examined that bowl, it said that the feet look like a hook. And I was like, I wonder if I can break it and then just use that on the rope. And that's what the answer was. I was right. Uh, you ever hear of Elrin Stan, York interrupts? Now that was an epic poem. Probably one of my favorites. Okay. He says weird stuff sometimes. Okay. So we don't want to cross this because this looks super dangerous. So we're going to go here. Ah! Okay, a dense fog greets you as the stone passage opens into a small chamber. The temperature plummets as a creature materializes in front of you. It flinches from the light of your torch. There's the clue. Use my torch on him. Okay, he's gone. With a cry, you swing the lit torch at the wraith. The ethereal being is instantly enveloped in a bright flash of flame, its tortured moan hanging in the air as it vanishes. Okay. Okay, I got another pumpkin. And this, these things, I can't figure out how to get these. You pull with all your might, but the rune will not budge an inch from the wall. Perhaps it is enchanted in some way. I probably have to use a spell, but I've not found it. So open up the door. All right, so now we're in the flooded chamber and I can open this, which allows me a shortcut to the mirror room. Let's take this, and then we'll take a look at it. As you read the scroll, one particular word stands out from the rest, Entraz. In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with power as you write down the strange markings on your spellbook. The scroll crumbles in your hands, and you have learned a spell. Okay, pull the grate loose here. You go this way. All right. Peering through the darkness, you drop down in the muck and crawl through the tight opening. This stone den is damp and smells of cups and green foliage, as if a mirage. The far side of the cave shimmers and power emanates from a standing stone obelisk. All right, so here, and this is, um, you learn about these. If you go to your bag and you go to spells, and you can examine the spell. So like Invokan, if I examine this by looking at it. The translation of this spell glyph is Invokan. Your mind glimpses some spectral person at the edge of your consciousness. So this gives you kind of a clue as to what it's for. And, you know, through trial and error, <laughs> I tried using it on this obelisk, and that's what you're supposed to do, apparently. You focus your will on the stone obelisk, and with a whispered word, your spell is unleashed. And there's Lakmir. A strange apparition coalesces from within the obelisk, the ghostly figure of an old man cloaked in a shimmering veil. You have done well, simple soldier. Simple? Now, Screw you. If you have ears, since the shadows grow long and time fleets. Some 40 years past, an evil, the light the world has not beheld, escaped its prison, Talimar, the Black, he of whom I have already spoken. I forgot this my phone in the other room. Lord I just realized that. <laughs> his dark magics and conjurations and unleashed his foul vassals, desecrating these sacred halls. Talimar has laid waste to the combined power of man. And what of the circle of twelve? The great wizards? They are no more. I am the last. Pity me not, boy. We were resolute in our I wasn't. judgment, but erred greatly. Twould have been better to put our brother to death. But mercy and folly prevailed. Eh, mercies for the weak. I know not Talimar's full plans, but have discovered enough to fill my heart with fear. And yet, hope remains, and it stands or falters with you. Yeah, no pressure. Thanks. Fare thee well. Blackmere, the timeless vanishes, leaving behind a scroll, a glowing orb, and the words, fare thee well. All right, so we've got the orb. 
and a scroll. <clears throat> so we're gonna look at the scroll. You read the words on the scroll aloud. Five to find, three are one. One gives access the bladed sun, the silver orb to banish below, the staff of ages to vanquish the foe, joining to the golden thorn, the blast to invoke the platinum horn. All right, so that's also things that we need. All right, so it's that's a uh, backtrack. So now that I have the orb, there's a lot more stuff I can do because the orb is a prison. It's used to capture elementals. Because remember that was hidden past the sewer. So that's our clue that that's what it's used for. So we go this way. And we go through here. And we're going to get the ice elemental first. Okay. Taking the silver orb from your statue, you advance upon the ice elemental. You can barely hold on as the power from within the orb latches onto this singularity and pulls it inside. A frosty pattern immediately encases the orb. Okay, so now the orb is charged with ice. So I can take it across the hall here and I can drop it in the water. Okay, so... As you release the ice elemental, you fumble with the silver orb, dropping it into the lake. Immediately, the still water freezes onto a, into a solid sheet of ice. Excellent work. Let's go across here. And this is the skeleton. You make your way across the slippery ice towards the chained skeleton. The skeletal remains of some unfortunate soul are chained securely to this rock. All right, so he has a key around his neck, so we'll take that. And then we'll take, I don't know if it's needed, but I'll take the blindfold too. Okay, then we need to get the orb back. So let's melt the ice. Okay, then we're going to go up here. And we're going to capture the water elemental. You slowly remove the silver orb and hold it out in front of you. A power from within the artifact immediately pulls the entity inside. Beads of water form on the surface of the orb. And now the water should unfreeze. Oh no, it's still, still frozen. Weird. Well, I don't, I don't need it to be unfrozen, so it's not a big deal. We can go this way. It doesn't really matter. We're just going back to the mirror room now. All right, so this one is the one that has the door. So we're going to smash it with the hammer twice. And then we're gonna use the key. Okay, and there we use the water elemental to put out the fire. An intense heat, surely from the unearthly fire before you, fills this large room. Once released from the silver orb, the water elemental immediately launches itself into the fire pit before disappearing. The flames lower to a tolerable level. I remember in the original when you tried to go across the bridge without putting the flames out, uh, like a dragon, like a fire dragon thing came up. Uh, and th that was like your warning that you can't cross this bridge without putting the fire out. And I remember in the original there wasn't elementals. It was just you found an orb that was freezing cold and you used it on the lake and then you melted the water and got the orb out of the lake after you got the key, and then you drop the orb down into the furnace and it turned the fire off. I also remember if you threw your torch down into the fire, it would reignite it, and then you would die. So I tried that once just to see what would happen. <laughs> um, all right, so now we're at the grate. Uh, this is where we use one of the spells, but I have to put, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I missed something. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I have two gears. I'm supposed to use one already. Uh, so this thing doesn't open, but if I go and look at my spell, I get, oh, not that one, a gap. And I look at it, it says, 
You sense a huge weight like a stone opening itself to some mystery beyond. So that's the clue that you use it here. And it unlatches the seal. And then you can see here, the pattern down here is up, middle, down. But there's a missing gear. So we have to cover it up with the gear. And then set up, middle, down, and then push the button. Okay. Um, so the reason we do that uh, is because it turns the waterfall off so we can get behind the waterfall. And there's a couple of things you need to get in there. For one thing, a couple of the, 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 those things on the wall that I can't seem to get loose, there's a couple of them in there. I'm sure they're important at some point. They weren't in the original game, but there's a couple of them here. But this guy has some stuff on him. And there's a couple of stones. Which, if I remember correctly, you would use them with the sling when you're... There's a cyclops later that you have to use the, a sling and stones on. Uh, I remember that from the original game. I've not seen it in this game, but I might as well grab them just in case. Open and... Oh! And read... You read the hastily scrawled words on the scroll. Brother, if you are reading this, then I am no more. I fear we have underestimated his ambition and the depths he would travel in the dark arts. Protect the seals at all costs. He must not get them. Power up the ways and follow the mirrored path to the lone keep. Add your strength to Uthalms. If nothing else, perhaps our weather master can blunt the evil one's advance, especially with your support. Fare thee well, Fandril the High. So this is Fandril's remains. Okay, so Uthalm is in the far tower which we'll get to at some point. Okay, so let's see, where are we going? We're going past the mirror. So here and then down. And then through the mirror. And then across the bridge. All right, so we're back here. Sorry, I gotta put the... ...gear in place, and then I use the enter spell. You let out a long breath, gather your will, and chant the spell. Debris fall from the rocks above as the iron grate responds, lifting with a shudder and a squeal and opening the way forward. And here's another one of those seals that I can't seem to get. Okay. Got a scroll. You read the elegant writing on the scroll. Brother Delden, please see to it that the circle chamber is prepared for the ritual. The circle dace was in need of some repair the last time we performed the initiate spell on it. We have a young candidate ready for initiation. Once the rite is performed on the platform, please bestow on him all authority and privilege commensurate with an acolyte of the order. It is signed with an archaic letter L, which I'm sure is probably Lachmir, but that's not, well, maybe not, because that's not Lachmir's remains, because he's not dead. Maybe it's a different L. Hmm. That's a good question. I'm not sure who that is. All right, so let's see. I am going to make a quick note here. Uh, with, with names, just names. Uthelm, Weathermaster. Behind Waterfall. Oh, Vandril's behind the waterfall. Uthalm was the weather master. Uh, okay, so we're going to go. That's the only way we can't go. <laughs>